Before we get started, we want to thank Falcon Eyes for sending us the Arisa RGB stick for review, but we're not paid or asked to say anything besides our own opinions. Falcon Eyes also does not get to see this video before it is published. They get to watch it at the same time as you do. Let's get straight to the point. On paper, the Arisa RGB stick has a CRI level of 96, which is pretty high. Here's the result testing the color accuracy of the light. Keep in mind that this is not a scientific test and we are just testing the light with a color chart to see if there is any heavy color shifting. Okay, so we're looking at the color chart right now. The camera that I used for this test is the BMPCC 4K, the Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera, and the camera settings are here. The camera is set to 5600 Kelvin at zero tint, and the Arisa RGB stick is set at 5600 Kelvin as well with zero tint at 100% output. That's the power output. I'm going to put this settings part away because it's going to throw my chart off like this. So I'm going to take that part off so you guys can see just how the chart looks like. So this is with just the color chart and I've done nothing to correct the color at this moment. I just boost up the saturation because the saturation was pretty low with the BMPC 4K and it was shot in ProRes 422. Okay. And I'm going to isolate each part of the chart so you guys can see how it looks like. The first one is the white strip on the left hand side of the chart. As you can see, it's pretty accurate to be honest with you. I'm really surprised. On this chart right here, we can see that the color temperature is just a tad cold. It's a little bit towards the uh, blue side. The blue channel is a little bit hotter just by a very, very tiny bit. As you can see here, the vector scope, we're seeing the white dot being a little bit towards the blue just by very, very little. So the CRI should be pretty accurate. The second part that I'm going to isolate is the palette right here. And if you look at the vector scope, I'm just going to boost up the saturation very quickly so you guys can see if they are pointing at the right box. So don't, don't worry about the, uh, the color strip because this is definitely oversaturated, but that's the purpose. So I can show you guys how accurate the color is. It's actually really good. So the blue channel is definitely really, really on point. The green, it's almost on point. The yellow is definitely really on point. The red, it's a little bit off towards the uh, yellow side. Magenta is a little bit blue and cyan, it's also a little bit blue, but this is very, very on point already. I haven't done any color correction at all to this light. So this is very, very impressive. I'm just going to reset the saturation and I'm going to show you the last part of the chart, which is quite important. Oops, I totally did the wrong thing. Okay, so I increased back the saturation. I'm just going to remove this mask. And the last part that I'm going to isolate is the skin tone palette right here. So now we have the skin tone palette isolated. And if we look at the vector scope chart, it's pretty on point. This is the skin tone line and all the skin tones are really, really on point. As I said before, the color is a tad towards the blue channel. So the entire skin tone line, it's shifted to the right. So if we shift it back toward the center, so we have to make the entire image a little bit warmer, then we will have the skin tone a little bit towards the yellow and we'll probably need to move it back to the red channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the last mask and show you what I did with the color. I basically change the channel towards a little bit to the yellow, make it a little bit warmer because this is a little bit cool. But to be honest, it's not that big of a deal. It's really accurate already. If you're really precise with your work, then you might need to adjust it. So I'm just going to draw the mask on the white strip again, and I'll show you what I did to correct the color. So as you can see, this dot is a little bit towards the blue. I just literally make the image a little bit yellow. 
So now it's spot on. And if you look at the entire chart, you pretty much can't really see the difference before and after. So this is after, this is before, this is after. To be honest with you, I can't really see the difference. But if we isolate just the skin tone, you can see that it's going toward a little bit to the yellow side. So you might need to use the HSL curve to adjust it to move this a little bit toward the red to be spot on. And you have to do something to other channel as well, of course, because remember the green is a little bit off, magenta is a little bit off, but they are not that big of a deal. So the Arisa RGB stick is really, really accurate when it comes to color accuracy. This is amazing. One very cool feature of the Arisa RGB stick is the ability to change the tint of the light. You can shift the light between green and magenta. This is great to balance the weird color shifts of some cameras and lenses. The most common color shift I've seen on cameras and lenses is magenta, so you can change the tint of the light to green to balance it out. This feature definitely helps you to dial in the closest color accuracy you want. In terms of brightness, the falconized Arisa can produce up to 885 lux at 5600 Kelvin and 890 lux at 2500 Kelvin. When I set it to the max brightness, it is very, very bright that I couldn't really look at it directly. When comparing it to other LED tube lights on the market, the Arisa almost doubles their brightness, which is very impressive. Besides being super bright, it also has kind of a frosty surface to diffuse the light, which is amazing because a lot of LED light tubes, usually the cheaper ones, don't have this coating and the light they produce is usually too harsh for a lot of applications. The light produced by the falconized Arisa is so soft that it can even be used as a key light, which is very impressive. You cannot really do this with other LED light tubes without the diffusion. It is also good if you are using the light stick as a practical light in the background. You will not see the individual LED light that you see in other lights. This makes the Arisa a very good option for, let's say, music videos. In terms of controls, it is very simple to control the Arisa with the five built-in buttons. Basically, they are the on-off button, mode cycling, menu item selection, and two menu item adjustment buttons. The only thing I wish Falcon Eyes can do in the future is to make the buttons a little softer to press. They are very hard to press on my unit. You really have to press it hard to adjust the light. One very nice feature of the Arisa light stick is the bright display to show you the status of the light. I'm actually very surprised by the quality of the display because usually you'll see these low resolution LCD displays on lights. You can see the mode that you're in, the battery status, and you can easily navigate through the menu with the display. Also, the display is very well backlit, so you should be able to see it under bright light even when you are under the sun. Another biggest selling point of the Arista is the Diesel Light app that you can use to control the light. It is available for both iOS and Android. The app is very simple to use. You just need to cycle your light to Bluetooth settings, select the reset Bluetooth if it is the first time you connect it to the app. Then you will be able to see the light on the app, tap connect, and that's it. You basically get the same controls as the buttons on the light, but now you can remote control it within the Bluetooth range. Let's say if you mount the light somewhere that is difficult to reach, this app will come in very handy. One very cool feature of the app is the ability to use the camera to copy and paste the color of the object to your light. I personally like setting the color and intensity manually, but being able to copy and paste color on a light can definitely help to speed things up by providing you with a good starting point. The only thing I think Falcon Eyes can work on the app is the responsiveness and maybe consider making an app for a tablet. Sometimes the light responses very slowly to the app or not responding at all. I have to tap on the same option multiple times in order to change the settings of the light. I usually have my iPad on set for notes and controlling other devices. So if they can make an app for tablets, that will be great so I don't have to use a blown up version of an iPhone app. 
The Arista light stick also comes with XLR in and out, so you will be able to control the light using a DMX light controller. I just don't have one to test this function, so I'm not too sure how it works. When it comes to power, the Arista light stick comes with a built-in battery that will last for about two hours at max brightness. That is definitely a lot of power considering how bright the light is, and it can last even longer on set when you set them to lower output. Last time when I was reviewing another RGB tube light, I was saying that they are very good as camping lights, and it is the same for the Arisa. I literally used my other light tube when my house went out of power. It is definitely an advantage when you are a videographer with all the lights at home. The Arisa RGB stick has an IPX4 water resistant rating, not waterproof, but it should be fine with water splash and rain, not underwater though. I'm more than happy with the IPX4 rating since my camera gear is not water resistant anyway. In terms of the build quality, the falconized Arisa is very solid even though it is mainly made out of plastic. The clear plastic that wraps around the light is very thick, so it should be very durable. But of course, you can still break it, just not as easy as glass. Falconize also included a very nice hard shell case for you to carry the light and the USB-C cable around. The case is very high quality and protective, just a little big. Talking about the size of the case, the Arista light stick is actually much thicker than I thought. All the LED light tubes that I have used are thinner and lighter. Yes, the Arista light stick is pretty heavy for its size. You can definitely feel the heft. When it comes to mounting options, the Falconized Arista comes with two quarter 20 mounts, one at the top and one at the bottom. You can also use the magnet on one side to mount the light stick onto any metal surface, but since the light feels pretty heavy, I might not rely on the magnet completely. The last thing you want to see is the light falling off from the ceiling, hitting someone's head, or even just hitting the ground, because I'm pretty sure it will break from the drop. I wish they can include more mounting options, let's say a clamp to mount the light tube sideway. I don't think people mind paying extra for that, so Falconize may be include that in the future. The Falconize Arisa RGB stick comes in three different sizes. The one I got is the Arisa 1, which is about one foot long. They also have the Arisa 2 at around two feet, and the Arisa 4 at four feet. I really like how Falconize named the products. It is very easy to understand. I would say if I'm getting these Arisa RGB sticks, I will get the Arisa 2 because I think 2 feet is a good size for setting the lights up in the background, using them as a key light or fill light, and it is good for traveling as well. A 4 feet light tube is just a little too long. I think I'll just need it occasionally. That's it. Those are my thoughts on the Falconized Arisa RGB light stick. The quality and the brightness of the light is definitely one of the best on the market right now. For myself, I always try to get the lights with the highest output because I can always dim the light, but I can't really make a light brighter than the max output. Having RGB tube lights can be very handy for a lot of projects, and I really wish we can get more of these. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.